we are back with the 2000 Camry Celeste we left off the radiator was pooched and the rear springs were gone and had all sorts of trouble getting the right parts in that well anyway the parts all came in and a week or two ago whatever it was that's the benefit of recording well in advance went over to XJO81X and uh, we worked on the radiator it's just easier with two people and in fact our old friend Tom showed up also I got a picture of that which I'm going to put up on the screen right now and basically the entire operation went textbook there you go brand new radiator uh, it's the Denso one like I explained which is made in Taiwan and um, what I found when I got over to Joe's place not only did I have the green shit around here but I also had uh, because he's only like a mile up the road so I just like started it and threw it in drive and went and didn't leave it to warm up I just sort of squeezed the hose and bubbles not really bubbles but seepage there was a crack here now could that crack have caused all the green shit here yeah but I think there was actually more than one um, break in it or maybe the crack was here either way when I would squeeze this you'd see the stuff come out of there little dribbles of it and that so maybe it sat a little crooked but basically it went just like the 87 it was absolutely textbook nothing to it changed everything over I also replaced the temperature coolant temperature sensor which is way down there we took off one of the transmission lines here because it was just easier to get it out of the way oh and another fun one we also had to take the Joe called it a skid plate I don't know what you call it <clears throat> see this metal thing at the bottom with the u-shaped cutout that whole thing is a big metal plate see a nice shiny thing down there and there's a nice shiny thing way down in there I don't know if you can see right now that's because out of the six or eight 10 millimeter bolts that held that up nine of them sheared off <laughs> they, they all sheared off so we actually put like a nut and bolt or actually a screw and a nut through there and that's what's holding it up it's nice and tight there's Loctite on it so it should be all good and really I think one of the hardest parts of this job was just getting the rubber mounts off the bottom of the radiator the old one to put on this one and much like on the 87 it was easier to put them in the car and then drop the radiator in and once again I got stuck doing the damn transmission lines Tom did that one I did that one and yeah it leaked some fluid but I replaced that the fluid is brown because it's brown and I put red in because that's what color it should be that's all right though because it shifts perfectly fine and if you go and change it then bad things happen so <laughs> while it's knackered you leave it knackered and uh, typically things will be fine so the little bit that I lost that I added back in is doing just fine and maybe have actually helped to like rebuild it a few thousand miles so that's all good so coolant was reused because there was really nothing wrong with it put that in put in the overflow um, we'll see that usually doesn't hold but it held so far it actually was higher when I got home maybe to here but um, it's cooled off since and as far as the shocks and springs and struts and all that so basically what I learned is like people call them shocks like oh it's the shocks that are bad no it was actually the springs that were bad and I got the entire assembly which is called the strut so that's how it works the 
spring and shock absorber as a unit is called the strut and we saw what it was before take a look now the car sits like a fucking car look at its level it sits nice i can now go i can put my hand in there is room and if i come around here i can go over here i can put my hand in there's room all that kind of great stuff more rust i'll just put that right back there make believe i didn't see that so yeah that's just dirt and i don't know what else so i guess we'll take it for a ride um i don't think that hubcap is in no nope, not all the way it is now no well, might have just cracked it <laughs> that's interesting never quite had that happen before but whatever it's not like it really matters did he put it back in the right spot yeah it's roughly there so I guess we should check the other one. I mean, it probably wasn't going to go anywhere, but... Yeah, that one's in. Okay, that's good. Let's go for a drive. Alrighty. I don't know what that rattly is. Just It just is. Good. So we got a car coming. We're waiting for go so again we'll just sort of go around the block I'm gonna have to open the window because it's getting warm which is nice drive around the mad hole covers drive around the potholes around them not through them around the potholes around the manholes do not hit them it's very simple just watch where the fuck you're going and the whiff made sure she was on her toes today when we drove out <laughs> excuse me to bring the car she was on her toes about definitely going around shit but even still there's going to be some bumps like that that you're going to go over it just can't be helped but the car rides so much nicer in fact when I first got in the car after picking it up and there's a story with that when I first got in the car I couldn't get my foot in the car. It got caught on the sill because it was so much lower before. And now <laughs> with the back of the car off the ground, it was amazing the difference. That it was like higher. I'm like, wait, wait, I got to step up to get in the car? It's not higher than the original ride height. Actually, it is because there's actually tags on the rear struts that say hey uh the car may sit a little bit higher because the springs have to settle and that came from the factory that way but they came and i brought the car to the guy and it's funny so i bring it over to cheech right we'll go up here i guess like we do so i bring the car to cheech I don't call them nothing, I just show up. I got the new struts in the back seat, ready to go. And I say, hey, how you doing? Hey, go, what's up, man? He's Spanish. I said, uh, I got a problem. And I sort of motioned to the car, you know, like, I got a problem. 
can't you see? <laughs> so, I don't know, he didn't quite understand exactly, I guess there's a language barrier. <laughs> he said, I don't know, who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't have problems? I said, no, take a look at the back. It's on the ground. And I'm saying to myself, the Spanish guys are gonna have a 2000 Camry and it's gonna be slammed to the fucking ground. So he probably looked at it like, yeah, it looks good, man. But anyway, he said, yeah, this fucking, he said, what happened? I said, the, the fucking uh, rear springs gave out. He said, oh man. I said, I got the new ones in the back seat. He says, okay, okay. I fix, I fix. So he took my number and that was it. Got back in the car with the whiff and we went and blah, blah, blah. Back on our way and he called me uh, five or six hours later. He said, okay, it's done, thanks. It's all right, I got you on camera. He said, all right, it's done. He said, your car is ready. So, okay, Ricky Ricardo, I pick it up. So we went down there to pick the car up. And like I said, that's a bit of a story. So let me get home and parked because I want to show you the radiator fans come on because people like the fans. So we'll do that. See, right now we got a little while till the radiator goes. Like I said, it's, it's getting warm out, but it's not incredibly warm it's nice with a jacket and here's the uh, thing radiator hose is red hot top of the radiator hose is pretty hot this has gone up from where it was which is normal this is the lower hose and it's just barely warm thermostat is in there by the way link in the prescription have a video on replacing the thermostat they did like years ago. The thermostat seems to open and close, which is interesting. I guess maybe it's not quite warm enough out where it'll just stay open. Because it so seems that once it gets cooled by the radiator and goes back, it's slamming it shut. Is it the wrong temperature? I don't know. But anyway, it's getting a little warm now, but that thermostat is not open yet anyhow with that being said we go to pick the car up so anyway he says it's ready I head on down there I had the whiff drop me off I go in he's talking to some other Spanish guys which is fine he sees me he says kind of nods his head to them like hey I got somebody I got to take care of here give me a minute which is great and uh, we go into his office I pay him right quick it's all cash there's no receipt there's no handwritten, there's no, this is the kind of place this is. And we're in the middle of Hempstead, New York. Hempstead, New York is not a great area. Not a great area. So I pay the guy and uh, he hands me the key and he's like, wait a minute, I don't know where the car is because he personally didn't work on it. He had one of the guys work on it. So he says, hey, Paco, little bit of Toyota. Ah, run the kids out of the Colgate. Colgate. And he says to me, you see that blue building down there? It's in the back. I said, in the back? Down there? He said, yeah. I got like four cars there now, man. So I don't know if he has a cooperation with them or it's just something that's kind of done on that block because there's nowhere to park. Everybody's triple parked next to a fire hydrant. It's, it's that kind of area. And it's so much of that kind of an area that there I go. So I got to walk down. Now let's maybe where that house is. So I got, I got to go to like the corner. Okay, it's not far, but it's not as close as the driveway. I got to go down there. That's where the building is. So I set off on foot and it's a nice day and the sun's out so I start walking and what do I see but 
the kind of stuff you would see in Hempstead. I see a street. Now, we got cracks in the street. I mean, it's it's been here, you know. But this is like potholes with puddles, you know, like filled with water in that. Then there's like a newspaper or a store sales flyer that got on the road. And then that's wet and it kind of like glues itself to the pavement. pavement. You know what I'm saying? It sort of like glues itself down on there and then it gets ratty and little pieces coming off. And you look and there's like a rusty chain link. Oh, I got those too. Rusty chain link fence. And it's got the curly barbed wire on top of it going down. And all the places look run down and all that shit. And I'm heading down to this building down the block in this area that I'm not familiar with and you never know and then I got to make a right and go up the alley there and it was just I'm just walking down the street and it was really interesting because just out of nowhere I start hearing There was a very good chance that he really could have been going up that alley. I get in the alley, I go up there, he's not there, maybe he was in the junkyard, I don't know. Anyways, um, I get to the back of the blue building and there's more potholes and broken pavement. Looks like it was paved 60 years ago, never touched since. And it's all beat up and broken and sandy and all shit like that fucking everywhere. And there's the car and it's just sitting proud. Just sitting proud again. It looks like a car. Just like Ginger, it looks like a car. It sits properly again. You know, it was good. All right, thermostat's opening now, or open, because this hose is getting very hot. Very hot now. That's nice and good. I don't have the parking brake on for the car. You know, it just does its thing. Oh, it even bounces off the engine mounts. Yep, that's nice and hot. Hot, definitely hot. Don't open that one, it's hot, by the way. And we're up just past, like I said, from before. Red hot, and let me come over here. You can watch the fan. There's two, I'm sort of blocking the sun. It's kind of hard to get the right angle. Them yellowish white bladed things there, you know, that's, that's a fan. So, I don't know where to stand, I guess here. I can't see the screen. And there they are. The fan. I always like how it sounded through the grill. Reminds me of them hot summer days. Especially nice if you have the AC on. The Toyotas generally have a low speed and a high speed. This is high speed. Shut off. Stopped at almost exactly the same time. They have a low speed, so you'll just get that whirr, just a little bit. And then because it's a hot day, the sun beating down, the doors and windows are shut, shit's on high and that, and then the car's like, okay, way too hot, cooler down. Puts the fans on. And it kicks into high gear and that, but yeah, when the coolant temperature sensor down there says, okay, the radiator is getting too hot, cool it off, it turns on the fan. Now, this hose I can keep my hand on. It's cool now, like I said, and the cycle is going to repeat. It's going to get hotter and hotter open the thermostat, 
start sending coolant through everything and then eventually it'll say getting hot see I can even keep my hand on the radiator it's actually a very very efficient system and it keeps the engine like if these fans ran all the time and the thermostat stayed open the cooling capacity is much greater than the car needs so that's built in as a safety measure if you will for those really really hot days and that now if you're in the middle of the desert and that well you got other issues entirely I mean there's some days where it just ain't gonna have it no matter what that are just way too hot getting stuck in traffic and that it, it's just not happening but otherwise uh, yeah so everything is back together and working wonderfully yet again so it's all back on the road I relinquished the keys back to the whip and she can drive it around it was actually a pleasure to drive it home it drove just like a car it was great having them struts in the back and it just works now so thanks so much for watching I really appreciate it make sure you click like make sure you click subscribe and take care we'll see you next time and don't cause any more funny business Lucy